Hello, this is going to be a client twin flame soulmate telepathic reading. And um, I'm not going to disclose his name. I'm going to keep his name hidden. I'll just refer to him as his initials. Okay. Um, so how this reading works, if you're not familiar with this reading, this is a pretty much a channeling of whomever the person is that you are inquiring about. You can ask specific questions, like ten, up to 10 questions that you would like to ask this person. Okay, or you can leave it up to spirit to reveal anything that needs to be disclosed about this person or whatever this person wishes to um, communicate. Okay. Um, also, if you don't have anyone specific in mind that you would like to um, inquire about or what it is that you, the message that you wish to come through from this person. Um, you can still get this reading. Sorry, I'm focusing on the cards, but yeah, it's really a pretty much a telepathic like channeling, like communicating with this person who you're inquiring about and asking the ten questions that you have, or leaving it up to you know spirit to reveal anything that needs to come out if you don't have anything specific to ask. Or you might just want to know, what is my true love? What are they doing? This is the questions I have for my true love, whomever they are, if I met them or I have not yet met this person. You know, it can work either way. All right, so if you're interested in your own reading, you can, of course, purchase this reading through my website. And I'll leave the link below in my description box. And um, you may resonate sometimes. You may resonate with someone else's reading, which is why I usually share these these readings publicly because um, spirit usually speaks to others through um, someone else's reading. Because I, you know, everyone's experienced that before. I'm sure you'll look up um, personal readings, or you've actually stumbled across someone's personal reading, and it did resonate with you. So. You know, there's no coincidences. Spirit will reach us however, you know, they see fit. So that's how it works. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with these five card or ten cards and see what messages is coming through. This person doesn't have any specific questions, so it's just gonna be totally freestyle of whatever spirit or the person that they are inquiring about wishes to convey through this reading, that's how it's gonna work. If I need to pull clarifiers, I will. Um, so let's see here. Hmm. And forgive me if I don't, um, I don't interpret the cards in a traditional way. It's it's a channel message, so it's not supposed to come out, you know, in a typical way. I would say generic, you know, you can read the cards generically, interpret them by book, and I don't really do that, even in my regular readings. <sighs> what I see here for just the energy that I'm already picking up here is that for you and this other person, there's a fear with opening up, okay, there's a fear of love pretty much there's a fear of falling in love there's a fear of being vulnerable with someone else or being vulnerable in your heart it's like there's a protection like both of you are fighting against this energy it's a pull towards one another whether it is a uh, divine partnership such as you know a lifelong partner that you you know have the traditional um, coupling with or this is someone that you are meant to cross paths with and you know if you guys have a specific purpose for each other outside of romance whatever it is because I did your reading before and there's energy that this person feels that you could be the, the one for them or that you know you're sparking some desires within them as far as romance and marriage 
but hearing this spread was really coming through um, is that there's much more than that. It's not so much romantic energy that's coming through in these cards. It's a little more deeper than that. Like there's another, a whole other purpose involved. With the Love of Balance cards, this would be like the Ace of Cups. What I get with that is the both of you are picking up on this energy, this divine energy. It's something that spirit has sparked within the both of you. It's almost as though it's like that this whole star cross lovers type of thing where you want someone so badly but it's like you just for the life of you you just can't get it together or you can't get with this person or it's always something that blocks the both of you or it's just something that hinders the connection from coming together and it's not so much that you both don't feel the same and you don't want to come together in a sense but it's just like things get in the way and the reason why I say that is it's not romantic. It's not a love situation like that. It's not meant to be um, boy meets girl or, you know, the typical story of two people attracted to each other. They come together. They start a life. It's not that at all. Something much deeper than that. I don't even feel like that's the purpose. I don't feel like that's really meant to be. At least not in this lifetime is what I'm getting. You guys are here to come together for a whole nother reason. You will, you both are picking up on this strong attraction and this strong pull. And it's kind of like spirit has sparked this for a reason. And I'm saying that the reason why for this connection is really to open you guys up. Open your hearts to pure authentic love it has nothing to do with romance it has nothing to do with the other person you know when it comes to them you don't really have much to do with this process it's kind of like you're just catalyst for each other because the whole purpose is for individually for you to open up to pure love and that love is non-exclusive to one person or one type of love it just is it's divine and I get that you guys share similar experiences which is why you guys share that um, mutual attraction I feel it's needing to overcome this you have challenging times and this is like the five of wands but I'm getting like it is an inner struggle it is some inner fight that is against vulnerability and being open to love and not needing to know how it's going to unfold and if this person is meant to be with me or not there's this i need to protect myself because i've been hurt before for the both of you you guys share the same lesson it's like a shared energy there's a mutual understanding and it it's like it manifests itself as attraction is what i'm getting you have to choose your battles card just the seven of wands there's a struggle there's a fight for this it's like even if this person and you don't come together romantically because i i still don't feel like that's the purpose when i see this card i see something much higher than just a mundane life or marriage or coupling i see like this to me is a balance on a higher level and i'm also getting that this represents the both of you as individuals your your masculine and feminine principles within yourselves being balanced through each other the pink here is like for me that's pure love it's not romantic love if i would see like lots of red in a, a coupling type of card i would say that that's very romantic energy but when I see the color pink, I think of pure, like innocent love. There's no sexual desires. There's no codependencies. There's no um, structures. It's just pure. That's the kind of energy I get from this. The both of you don't want to see the fact that there's something there. It's like the connection is 
it's to how do I explain it it's very overwhelming it's like you acknowledge it to an extent you acknowledge that you and this person um, have an attraction or you have an attraction for them or they have an attraction to you but it's like it's something that's too eerie and it's like you want to shut that out immediately because it doesn't make logical sense it doesn't feel right you might overanalyze the situation too much and you're missing the divineness within it it's like you don't understand it and also the other person may not understand it i feel like of course you might understand it a little bit more because you wouldn't be here inquiring about this person if you didn't believe it was something much more to it but the helpless and hopelessness card you have refusing to see so it's like because you're not seeing things from your highest self you're not seeing things clearly you're looking at things from a confused state or a place like lower level where it has to make logical sense or it doesn't exist or it's not real or there's something wrong with me um it's causing you not to progress as where you should be progressing None of this makes sense to me, by the way. It's just, I don't know, it's just coming out. So it doesn't make sense to me, but hopefully it will resonate with you that you'll understand it. But I'm just getting that it stops you from progressing as you should. Because then it, it's like, you don't know which way to go with this. It's like you're in a limbo. You're in two different states of mind. But regardless, you're looking at things from a place of like, obstacles and negativity really it's like you feel like you're not at all in control of the situation and in a sense you're not because you know it's higher powers working even your highest self but you're giving all of your power away to the point where you don't you're not moving you're not taking charge and there's a, in a sense you do have some wisdom about what to do with the situation or what it is but it's going to require you to look at this person in a lot of different forms like you can't look at this person as just this person has to be my lover or this person is you know a soulmate that that's only meant to be with me or I'm only meant to be with them or it must be a certain way or you know whatever structure you can't look at it from just one perspective you got to look at this connection you have to look at this person from a divine view it's like this person there's no label you know you never know what what the interaction really is and I always feel this energy and it makes sense to an extent when when I said something about mutual attraction. The mutual attraction is kind of like the hook that spirit gives us to move forward with the divine plan. Okay, that person's kind of just like that, the worm on the hook just to catch you, to reel you in for what's bigger, what's higher, what's the true purpose of the situation. And when people usually have attractions to people, they automatically think that that means they have to have sex with them or it must be that we're meant to be together in a romantic way. But most of the times it's either because there's something divine that you must learn through that person. So it's kind of like a seduction, but not on that, that level, not on a, a sinister level. It's more like a hook, like I said, to reel you in, a catalyst or you're sharing a familiar energy. You know this person. You share the same energy or you spend a lifetime somehow together where you were brother or sister, whether you were father and mother, whatever the case may be, that's usually where our attractions or these vibes come from. And we can easily just drop it and say, no, that must mean that we're meant to be together or, oh, we gotta have sex together. And it's not that. It's much deeper than that. And I feel like that's what spirit's trying to get you to see, that the connection is pure than what you're seeing. So it's like, look at it from other angles. Try to be open-minded to the fact that it's not just this or that. 
it can't be then the clarity of belief card ends it all so with the clarity of belief this is like divine um knowledge and wisdom it's almost like there's gonna be an epiphany or some sort of click that just shows up in your mind. It's like something just pops up in your mind that just clarifies everything for you. And it's a, a freedom in your heart. It's like you're free from all of this confusion of what is this? What is it supposed to be? And it should be this way and it shouldn't be like this. It's like it's going to blow your mind in a way where you're free, you're liberated, like your heart is literally free. And that's the only thing spirit's been trying to do this entire time. It has nothing to do with the other person, hardly. It's really about you and the same for this person. It's hardly about you, it's about them. I hope that makes sense. But I'm going to clarify because this is like kind of the shortest um, telepathic reading I've done. But it just kind of just came through like that. Um, let's see if there has anything to clarify. I don't know if I can take all these cards, but I'll do it. Let's see. The devil card at the bottom. So there's definitely some karmic energy. When people see the devil, they automatically freak out. That's one of the cards you people usually don't like to see even the death card but these are necessary energies i on a positive note how i see the devil is i see it as a false sense of um being trapped or um you know it's we fall victim to the boogeyman and it's not really really it's not real we give the devil too much credit i always say that even in religious a religious sense the devil gets too much shine when he's supposed to be, you know, the Lucifer thing. He's supposed to be a part of God's creation that got deemed to earth, punished. Yeah, you know, the whole thing, he's the ruler of the earth and the world and all of that. But that's only because God gave him the power or them, whatever, Lucifer, devil, whatever it is, gave them the power of that. And it's not so much so, but they're more powerful than God. It's only the power we give it. So it's like the boogeyman thing, like the clothes in your closet. You give it too much credit. You start creating all of these fantasies in your head that, that all of the piles of clothes in your closet or whatever it is in your closet is some other monster. And you just start creating this fear and you start getting intense. You start hiding. You don't want to come out of your bed. That's the power we give something that doesn't have power. So you, I feel in a sense, you feel victim to this karmic tie to this person or the karmic lesson. You feel helpless, like the helpless and hopeless card. You literally feel like, oh shit, did these cards really come out like that? Wait a minute. I guess they did. Wow. Um, but you fall victim to this connection like I don't have any control and it has to be this or it's not that or you know you just it could also be a sign of addic being addicted to this whole thing and feeling like you're trapped or being obsessed with it because you don't understand it that actual like actually is not holding you captive you can be free at any time even though it may look like these people are um they are chained, but their hands are free. Like they could easily break the chains or whatever else. You just never know what's around them. It could even be a key underneath their feet and they're too afraid to look around. They're just focused on the fact that they're chained, trapped. These cards fell out in such a way that is like really crazy that they fell out perfectly on each card as, as if they're clarifying each card. So there's no mistakes here. So I'm going to take it. So you have the Queen of Pentacles that fell out. I feel like this love, like that spirit's trying to get you to open up to is like a love of a mother. It's pure. It's nurturing. It's here for you. It's always there for you. Like our mothers, you know, usually, yeah, our mothers should always be there for us 
to nurture us, to, to love us and put us back to, uh, bring us back to health and nurse us. Not in a codependent way, but it's just showing it's like a mother's love. It's a very protective, loving energy here that spirit's trying to give you. And it goes back to that pureness. There's nothing romantic about any of these cards with the exception of the Ten of Pentacles, which can be a happy family card or the marriage card or inheritance. But I feel like this could be you guys had um, some experiences in your childhood or you have certain beliefs surrounding marriage or, you know, something with your mother. Maybe she suffered a lot in their marriage or in a relationship with your parent, your father, or it just, you have certain beliefs, fixed beliefs surrounding marriage to the point where you're not totally open to it. There's fear behind it. And I feel like it could be your mother, the empress. There's a lot of like mother energy, family. So I feel like this goes back to childhood or something to do with your your mother. Um, and her her structure or her view on marriage or what her marriage was, if she was ever married, some you know, it, it could be that or it could be their relationships with another uh, person, a significant other, that somehow causes this fear, this challenging energy, and it comes from the mother, the empress. It causes this restriction and this block, this energetic block, like you don't, you're not open to this, like this happy family. Like there's no such thing of a, a fairy tale or happy ending. It can't be that good. It's it's too good too good to be true because maybe you thought you were experiencing that as a child and then you found out that maybe that was an illusion. With the magician card here, with the balance, which is the energy or the connection itself, I feel like there may be a slight a slight um illusion surrounding it because you have the four pinnacles underneath it and this is the card that i was picking up that you need to look at this connection from different angles because there is a fixed perception or you know structured beliefs that you don't want to bend or let go of or how you view the connection it's got to be this way or it can't be that or and it's it's like a hoarding energy it's like a very stubborn type of energy unwilling to let go of what's tired and true to you it's like it's it's not based off of anything you're not losing anything by letting go of some of these perceptions um yeah, but I feel like there may be some illusions surrounding how you view the connection. With the choose your battles, with the king of cups, the battles may very well be that you're not open to your emotions. You're not honoring how you really feel. There's some sort of denial about how you feel within the connection or about the connection or about the other person or about yourself within the connection. It's like you're not um, honoring that. You're not taking ownership of your feelings. Then you have another illusion card. They're refusing to see. It's like you're refusing to see past what you want to see, what you desire to see, or what you want or desire from the connection so much so that you're not moving. And it's like these cards are almost like synchronistic with each other. Like the helpless and hopeless card, there's two different paths you can take. And the energy here, you have a choice of how to move forward, but there's no movement. It's like a lack of understanding. Not You're not looking at things from your higher self. You're kind of looking at things from possibly your ego. With the leadership position, with the sun card, like I said, you have wisdom and knowledge of how to proceed. You have some sort of clarity or, or knowledge about how to go. And I feel like your higher self is, has been giving you messages as clear as day with the sun card. This is illumination. This is you know, things coming to light. The sun reveals all, it illuminates all, but it also revitalizes. So there's some sort of positive backing behind the wisdom you have, some sort of clarity, power behind it. And I've already explained that one, but yeah, there's some fixed perceptions about the connection 
with the clarity of belief card, the five of swords. This could very well be a mental trigger, okay, before you get that clarity that you need, or it could come through after the trigger. But it will be some things that are said or communicated that you might not like, whether it comes from me or whether it's coming from your own higher self or whether it's coming from you and that person. If you guys get into some sort of disagreement or disagreements with others that bring about this clarity from spirit, it's something that is not really wanted with the five of swords. It's not, you know, a, a card that you would like to get communication wise or even mentally but I feel like it may be some triggers there that kind of spark this clarity of belief that just comes. But know in the end, it's going to free you. It's going to feel very liberating, like your heart is free, whatever that means for you. But that's what it, it's going to lead up to. So that's your reading. I really hope that this helps you and that it resonates and it makes sense to you. Because it doesn't really make sense to me, but it's not supposed to. But as always, I'm sending you much love. And whoever else is watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Maybe you've taken something from it. And if you, like I said, if you're interested in your own reading, I will leave in the description box how to book this reading or where to book the reading. And I send you guys much love. Till next time.